um, I guess I can start with the first slide. We were doing module one, um, so it was mostly an overview of things that we learned. Uh, and honestly, I haven't seen this whole completed slideshow yet. Um, but I, I think the gist of this is that we have to become more creative with the way that we teach because our students are more creative in the ways that they learn, or they're different anyway. Um, so this is about how that's different. Anything that you want to add, Lindsay? think so. I, I, I think that was pretty much it. Can we have the next slide? What we learned in our initial um, section of this course was what emerging technologies are. I found that I had some ideas about emerging technologies that weren't necessarily all related to the internet. Um, I think there are a lot of things that I use every day as an educator that are new technologies. Um, and I, so I think that it's actually much broader than just the internet, although that's been the thing that's been the biggest, had the biggest impact. Um, but I also think that, that it's important that we shift our paradigm as educators because if you just use new technology you're, you're, and you still teach in the same old way, your problems are going to remain. You're still not going to be reaching students. So number three up there is how do we learn? That's, to me, the biggest question you need to ask yourself is how do we learn? And, and you're going to get a different answer um, with each person that you look at. I'm getting an echo. I think maybe uh, um, that's when um, Lindsay's trying to speak. So I guess oh, okay. we'll have to Sorry, toggle to on and on. off. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll, I'll stop. No problem. I was just uh, just definitely agreeing with you that the uh, emerging technologies is more than just having the technology. It's changing the entire way that we teach and um, making the technology um, not just interactive for the students, but but really the basis of um, of what it is that we're teaching because we're teaching them about the technology and they're teaching us at the same time. Um, but we, uh, but we're using it to educate as well. If we can get the next slide up, and then go pretty quickly to the one after it, because <laughs> uh, the role of change is just a cover slide again. Um, what really the question is, what what came up was that as we think about emerging technologies. This is something that's being driven not from the top, but from the bottom. Like you offer a technology and now people, students are creating. Students are looking th things up while you're teaching and correcting you. And, and that's got to be okay, you know. So that, that's a major paradigm shift for most teachers. Um, so I don't know. Do you have anything to add? I, I like this this slide because um, I think it to me this speaks a lot to the the digital natives digital uh, immigrants uh, topic and I, I don't know I guess to me I, I see a connection here if we're we are trying to uh, use the technology in the way that we want it to be used or if we're letting the technology shape the way that we teach. Um, which, I mean, you could really do both and I think it depends on uh, what it is you're teaching and what technologies it is, but um, yeah, I guess just something to think about there. So uh, we could probably go to the next slide. I learned a tremendous amount in this class about um, what kind of new technologies are emerging and I was able to learn things in this class that I was able to use right away like Prezi in my job um, I really struggled with making the YouTube <laughs> that was really hard but um, actually I figured it out and it wasn't as I was making it harder than it had to be I thought I had to make a film and I didn't um, 
So that, I think, will just be a constant question to be thinking about. Um, there are a lot of um, things that I've discovered also because my 11-year-old daughter is playing with them. And that's, that's a constant source of um, horrific new technologies, you know, that can bring stalkers right into your bedroom or, um, you know, really kind of wonderful things like the Khan Academy and like, um, like Second Life and all these other things. Do you have anything to add? Nope, I think, I think that's pretty much it. Um, you could probably go to the next slide. So uh, this one is um, obviously what we talked about in Module 1, and uh, this comes directly from the reading um, from Valencianos because it really was the basis of uh, how we talked about defining um, emerging technologies. So um, I think they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, they obviously may or may not be new. Um, for example, Facebook isn't new in itself, but the way that we're using it, um, thinking about education-wise, is new. So um, the technology itself isn't new, but it's emerging in the way that we're using it. Um, the second one there, they're evolving organisms that exist in the state of coming into being, which means that um, it's not static, it's not um, created and then it doesn't change at all, that it continues to evolve and um, usually get better and improve and uh, make things easier but you know at the same time there there could be uh, downsides to that especially once you get used to using something in a certain way and then it evolves again um, but they keep changing uh, the third one is that they go through hype cycles um, for instance Instagram right now is really big and um, something else that I <laughs> heard some adolescents talking about it's called Snapchat. Um, this is obviously not an educational technology, but um, it's definitely emerging. And it's really, really popular right now, but it's been around for a little while, and it hasn't been as popular in the past. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the fourth one is that they're not yet fully understood or fully researched. Um, I think this one... Uh, yeah, right. Um, I think this one is important because what we're doing now is starting to understand them and starting to research them, and um, it's incredibly important for the future of education, um, especially what we're talking about right here in this emerging technologies. Um, we don't yet have all the answers and we don't yet fully know how to use all of these technologies but um, we're going to continue to evolve in the way that we use them just as they are evolving at the same time. And then the last one here, they are potentially disruptive but their potential is mostly unfulfilled. Um, this was something I actually came across uh, in my, my past job. Uh, I wanted to use Facebook as an educational tool and um, some of the uh, administration was on board with that and some of the administrators were not and so you know this was their fear was that it would be disruptive but uh, I was thinking they have so much potential there's so much potential to be using it but we're just we're not even meeting that potential we're not even getting there because we don't have the opportunity to use it um, so I think that last one has a lot to do with um, the way that you're using technology in the classroom, not necessarily the technology itself. Um, okay, so Jen, I see that you're here. If you want to come up and join us, and take a slide. That would be fine. Um, <laughs> hmm. um, on the next slide, I think you're there, right? Categories. We, we worked with a lot of these things in this class. Um, again, this is another 
example of how, um, I guess, there's no longer a horse or a cart, <laughs> but there is also not a conventional driver of a horse. So there are students who are creating curriculum and, and teachers are struggling to keep up. And there are so many ways that you can have students create media. And then that media goes and inspires more technology. So with video and podcasting and, and digital presentation tools, um, when I got to my job, somebody suggested that we needed a digital camera, and I said, what for? What we need is an iPod, you know, or an iPad. Um, it does everything. So things are just changing too fast for state organizations to keep up with. Um, and you can use these things with any learning group, you know, blogs and blogging, um, student response systems. Are you, Jen, are you here? No. Yes, yeah, she's right behind you, and um, we're going to have to kind of go through the rest a little faster so we can get to the okay, others. I'm let Jen take over. Okay, and I'll, I'll pull them up, but uh, we have about five minutes to finish up, so um, just tell me when to start pulling them over. Go ahead and go to the next one, which is kind of busy and hard to read, but it's fantastic. Everybody should copy it. <laughs> I can't hear Jen, so I'll just keep going. So yeah, um, that one shows you really a myriad um, assortment array of different options for technology. And then um, if you just want to go kind of quick, Eileen, the next one is a nice graphic. Asking the essential question, which I probably already talked about. Um, and then the next slide again is about learner interaction and how essential it is. Um, a comparative, uh, uh, this is a great table comparing the different approaches to learning. But the application with emerging technologies is pretty significant, that it's learner-centered, and that it um, focuses on interactions between learners, which will give you, on the next slide, the 20th century skil skills that you need. And then the slide after that is a graphic about 20th cen 21st century learning. And the last slide um, I'm just too confused at once. What really matters and this is really the point for me of this exercise, maybe it's less relevant to consider what specific technological skills we will need and instead to do the same things that successful humans have always done to employ good critical thinking skills, standards of ethics, and client adaptability in the face of change. 